Hey YouTube, this is Liberating Pulse back with another tutorial. Finally, yes, I know I got around to it. But this one I'm going to be covering creation of kick sounds because that is hugely important in the creation of music that I like to make, which is usually like around dubstep trances type stuff. So let's begin. So here we go, we'll go over, click the plus here to create a new instrument. We want it to be a software instrument, so make sure that's ticked off there. The next thing you do is you click on the I.O. section and choose Ultra Beat. You don't need multi-output for this because all you're doing is one kick sound, so stereo. That works plenty well. So the first thing you do when you see this is you freak out and you go, Oh my gosh, what are all of these controls for? I have no idea what I'm doing in here. And then you say, Alright, it's okay. I'm watching a tutorial. Everything will be just fine. So, start by clicking on the presets thing, and then go to drum kits and choose drag and drop samples. Oh, look at that. No samples are loaded. Nothing is loaded. Fresh, clean slate. Now, to start, I'll explain a bit of what goes on inside of Ultra Beat here. Now, for this one, I'm going to be loading samples in instead of synthesizing stuff, so it will be a little bit simpler. But what happens is you load a sample into this section here, and then it routes through here. Now what's going on here with all these knobs and stuff is um, this is the volume level at minimum velocity. This is the volume level at maximum velocity. This is the green handle here and it's being controlled by velocity. You can set it to be controlled by other different things but that's what it's set to control by. So the harder you hit the key on your keyboard the louder the sound is. Easy enough, right? Next thing is the pitch control here on the side. It's set to C3 by default, that is just the standard pitch, but you can pitch up the sample or pitch down the sample as necessary. Next it goes through this section in the center right here. And now this, I don't use it all the time, but it includes a filter and a distortion unit. Usually when I distort stuff I'll use the bit crushing thing so what you do is you click that to activate it turn the drive up bring the clipping level down until it's as loud as you need it to be and then you can turn up the color to reduce the bit depth but we're not going to use that in this next section is this one right here the filter section it's pretty easy to understand if you know what an EQ does in fact it actually is just an EQ it's just two bands though what you can do is you can have a parametric EQ where you have this thing that's just a point or you can have it be a shelf EQ. I think that's what they call it. The next section I'm going to talk about is the envelope right here. Right here you have four different envelopes and what these do is these can control the volume of something or the pitch of something over time. This fourth envelope is the most important for us right now because by default it is controlling the volume of the final output. So what this means is the sample will go on and it will stay as loud as it can get as long as you're holding onto the key, but as soon as you let go the volume will drop off. Now if you turn off the sustain, which is what we're going to be doing in this tutorial, then as soon as you hit the key it just drops off like that. Full volume to no volume in 36 milliseconds. That's really fast. We're going to change that later. Now these other two sections up here route through all the same stuff, but instead this is a generator right here, so instead of loading a sample, it creates its own sound. Same with this one, except it creates a noise sound instead of a waveform. But for this tutorial, we won't be messing with these for now. We might get into it a little bit later, but don't worry about it. So the first thing to do is to find a good kick sample. Sounds easy enough, right? So what you do is you go into your sample library, you can open up the media thing here, go to your browser and browse through your computer. I have mine set to uh, be right inside my hard drive, right there, so it's really easy to get to. Now, I have a whole bunch of samples I've collected from the internet, I've bought some sample packs, I've found some free sample packs on the internet. You need to go out, find your own samples, because it's very important. Now, another thing, you can get so many samples, and so many will be complete trash. You don't need them. I just recently discovered that I have a whole bunch of garbage samples I don't need. 
thousands of them, in fact. So I have so much to go through and organize. So I'm working on that right now. But anyway, here are the kicks that I've narrowed it down to so far. I have a, I don't know how many, but a lot. So I'm going to go through my samples and find something that covers the sub bass frequencies really well. Because in this kick, we're going to have two main elements. One will be the sub bass, the other one will be the click sound, the sound that makes it punchy. So I'm going to go through here until I find something that has a good oomph in it. Now to go through these samples like this, you just click on a sample, hit the space bar, and it will automatically play the sample for you, and then you just press up and down on your keyboard and it will keep playing them. You don't have to hit the space bar anymore. Ooh, I like this one. This one has a nice sub sound in it. I think it'll work. So you hear that right there? This is the sample sound, but it's being acted upon by this envelope 4 with the sustain off. So that means the kick sound is over with in 36 milliseconds. We want to extend that a bit, so you can drag out this handle here, and you can bring it out to, I don't know how long. But around 200, it's sounding pretty good right now for this sample. I'm actually going to use my MIDI keyboard that I have here to play these samples, so... So much easier than actually clicking on that thing, but if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you can just click on there and that'll work. The first thing I need to do is isolate the sub-frequencies because I don't need the top-end grit that's in there. Not right now, anyway. If I find I need it later, then I'll add it back in. But to do this, I choose the second band, which is a high cut. So I bring down the volume to negative 18 decibels, which is the minimum, and change the frequency here until I've cut out all the unnecessary stuff. So around 270, that works right now. So I can change all this later if I need to fix it up. But that is the basic sound right there that you need, the sub-bass frequencies. But if you don't have the higher end click sound, you won't have any punch in your kick and people won't be able to distinguish it from anything else in your song. It won't stand out like you want it to. Although some genres of music don't have a kick that stands out, but what I work with has a kick that's very prominent in the mix. So the next part, I want to find a click sound that accentuates the sub-frequencies. So I'm going to go through my kick samples, but I mean, you can find a good click sound inside of a lot of different things. I found it inside of a tom drum sample before, but I'm just going to go through my kicks again to see if I can find something. Now, I like this sound. It had a really powerful click sound in it. I'll drag it in and isolate it so that you can hear that. So let's see. Okay, that was really loud. Sorry about that, but anyway, what we're going to do is cut out the sub bass frequencies because we already have those covered by the first sample. So let's use band one, which is a low shelf, and lower that to 18 decibels and bring it up until we get rid of all the stuff we don't need. And actually that's sounding pretty good right now. And turn off the sustain down here because we need to have perfect control over the envelope. Now that's all right right there, but I want the click sound to be a lot shorter. So what I'm going to do is change the curve on this envelope and shorten it. Now, I think that's pretty good, but how about a little bit shorter and make the curve a little bit different here. Now, I think that's all right. I'm going to see how it mixes with the other kick now. 
So to do this next part, just close the media. You can open up your piano roll. There's a way better way to do this, but I'll teach you that later. And go to, I think it's C1. Now hold Command key and then click. Uh, let's see, where did it go? Uh, okay, yep, C1 is where it starts. And if you hold the option key while you're dragging notes, it will actually duplicate it. So nice trick. I love it. All right, now let's make this cycle. So drag from left to the right where you want it to cycle and hit the space bar. Oh, and look, I didn't hold the option key the whole time when I was dragging that. Mer. Problem solved. Yeah, that's all right, I guess, but it needs something more. So let's go back into here. I think the click sound needs to be a bit quieter, so I can just drag down this sample volume level for that. And then I'll go over to this kick sound here, and I want to make it lower. So what I can do is just drag the pitch down a little bit. Now, another thing I want to do with this sub sound is to make it start out a little bit higher and then drop down even lower. To do this, we can modulate the pitch via one of these envelopes. So I'm going to use envelope one and have it modulate via that. There we go. So now we can choose the high point here and then this is, would be the low point. So I'll bring this down a little bit. And I'm not going to have it separated so much, so I'll have it right there for now. Now, our fourth envelope is only 300 milliseconds, so I'm going to have to shorten this one considerably because it's 1,000 milliseconds right now. Now, I'll change the curve here by grabbing it in the middle, and that will make the pitch go down from this top point to this bottom point in 170 milliseconds. Now I think I like that sound a lot better so I'm gonna keep playing with this a little bit to see how I can get it. Yeah, and I think I'm happy with that sound. It starts out a bit higher and then it drops way down so that you have that huge oomph sound. Now for the click sound, I think I want to try adding a little bit more grit to it. So I'm going to use the bit crusher here and turn up the drive and then bring the clip level down so that it's not too loud. So if you listen, here's the before without the bit crusher, and here's the after. Not much difference, but I can tell. If you can tell, then good job. You're on your way to something, something great, I'm sure. So for the next step, once you get this basically finalized, we can close out this ultra beat for pretty much the rest of the process. So ta-da, so much easier. Now if you have this MIDI through thing open and your screen size is really small, what you do, click that little arrow thing, triangle, get rid of it. Ta-da! Look, we can see our plugins. The first plugin we're going to be using is the Channel EQ. Now this will be pretty easy, pretty understandable if you know what an EQ does. All this is the lower sub frequency, this is the mid low frequencies, this is the mid highs, and this is the trebles. So by boosting these frequencies, you can make it sound louder in that frequency range. So if I want to make the subs really loud, crank that up, and then all of a sudden it will start going because my speakers are not that great. So I'm going to bring that back to normal. So first thing you'll want to do when you open up the EQ is to choose the analyzer, turn that on so that we can see what's going on in real time with the frequencies. 
Now that's all right, but we want to be able to see what's going on in the low end, so we need to turn up the resolution. And to make it go faster, we're going to turn up this analyzer decay to 30 decibels a second. Ta-da! Yeah, I'm just going to slow down the project a bit so it's easier for me to work with this. First thing you'll want to do when you go into the EQ is to cut out the low end that you don't need. So activate this right here, and then you can usually leave it around 30 hertz. That's actually about right. What you want to do is you want to cut out really, really low frequencies because nobody can hear that, nobody can feel that, no speakers can reproduce that unless they're super crazy huge, but you don't need that. So just get rid of the lower, like, 30 hertz or so. So once you have that done, you can go through and find some other frequencies you want to cut out. So let's see, what else do we have? I think I want to get rid of some of the stuff in the 100 to 200 range, so that way I have more sub sound to hear. So I'll lower that a little bit. Well, that's what it sounds like. So this is a good way to find out what frequencies you want to get rid of. It's to make a nice pointy EQ thing. You can do that by grabbing the dot and dragging downward. And then you can just grab the band and move it left to right until you find something you want to get rid of. Okay, so I think I want to get rid of that. So I'll grab this and pull it up so that it's a bit wider there. And then drag this down so that we can cut that frequency. And I think I want to increase the bandwidth of this. There we go. Want to move the frequency up. And you know what? I think that's all I want to modify here. It actually is pretty good, doesn't need much EQing, but if you're doing a different kick sound, you might need to do some more harsh EQing. Of course, I think I could get rid of a little bit of stuff around the 1000 hertz range. This way there will be more room in the mix for other instruments. So the next stage in the process is the compressor. But actually I'm going to show you what the waveform looks like before I do the compressor stuff. And actually I just want to bring it down to one kick loop here. Easy enough. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce this down to audio so that you can see what's going on in the waveform. It should help you understand what's actually going on behind the scenes, I guess. But really, you guys don't need to do this at all. This is just for demonstration purposes. All right, so there's our beautiful waveform. What you can see here is this is the basic click sound, this really quick, sharp stuff. And then this is the sub-frequency stuff, the stuff that you can actually see these big waveforms. So that's what it looks like without compression, without anything else. Now the next step in my process is adding a compressor. Now this is actually a pretty basic process. A lot of people use the same general ideas in making kick sounds. So this is nothing groundbreaking here. It's just something I discovered after tons of frustration. So first thing you'll want to do is set this to zero because otherwise it'll just boost it up way too loud in volume and we can boost the volume later. Don't worry about it. The next thing I do is I like to set the compressor to peak because that way it will react more quickly to the sound coming into it. Now there's these circuit types, you can choose different ones. I've heard different things about them, but I have not played around with them enough to be sure about it. So just leave it at platinum and that'll work well for this. If you read up online, you can probably find out lots of great information about these different types of circuits for the compressor and see what they're more useful for. Some of them are better for vocals, some of them are better for drums, and things like that. Now a compressor, if you don't know what it is, is like an automated volume knob. What it does is when the volume goes over a certain threshold that's set right here, 
it will automatically get pulled down in volume. The higher this ratio is, the more it will get pulled down in volume based on how loud it is. So if it's set to 8, 1, then that means for every 8 decibels louder than 12 and a half or whatever your ratio is, it will only get 1 decibel louder. So that's 7 decibels in gain reduction. If you still don't understand that, I'm going to post a link to a, a thing made by SF Logic Ninja that does a great job explaining this, putting it in very simple terms, very understandable terms, so that you'll be able to get this, because this is an important concept. Now along with controlling the volume, it also has the attack and release here. Now what these do is it controls how long it takes before it reacts to the volume. So if it's set to do 10 milliseconds here, it will take 10 milliseconds to pull the volume down after it goes past this threshold. And then it will take 48 milliseconds here to bring the volume back up to normal once the volume gets below 12 and a half. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to crank the ratio way up, bring the knee to zero, and bring this threshold down so that we can hear what's going on. It's not going to be permanent. So if you heard that, all you heard was the click coming through because that's all that could come through in those 10 milliseconds before it gets pulled way down in volume. So what we want to do is increase the attack until we have enough of that early punch sound before the oomph of the kick. Now at the same time we'll want to lower the release so that this gain reduction goes back to zero before the next kick hits because otherwise you'll have it still lower in volume when the next kick hits and then it won't be nearly as punchy. So watch that carefully. Now once you find a good sound that gives you the click sound you want, you'll want to bring up this compressor threshold until it's okay sounding and then reduce this ratio. You don't need to go anything super specific, but I usually get it around 4-ish, and then bring up the threshold until it sounds pretty good. So right there at negative 12 is pretty good. It reduces the back end of the kick pretty well, so that's nice, and that's good for later. And I'll show you what actually happened to our wave file here. So I'm going to close that out and bounce it down to audio. So here we go. So if you look here, here's the original bounce down clip here. So we have this click sound and then it drops and then it gets really loud with the sub bass here again. Now what's happened with the compressor is it's, it still has that loud click sound but then it drops and this doesn't get nearly as loud. So this will be helpful later on when we're limiting the kick at the end. You'll see, it's really cool. So once you have the compressor set properly so it has a nice click sound at the beginning and still has a little bit of the oomph at the end but not too much, it has to reduce it some. So the next step in my process usually is to add a bit crusher. Now usually this is used for making it have a distorted sound and stuff like that, but in this case I'm actually going to use it as a clipping device. Now what this means is the volume will only go up to a certain level, and once it hits the maximum level it can go to, it will just flatline like this. Now that's important in this because it gives our kick the nice click sound, but it's loud and it's punchy. Very important. Now what you'll want to do is bring the resolution from 8 up to 24, bring it back, and if the downsampling is set to anything, leave it at one times. It's nice that way. Now the mode, you'll want to have it set to this, not any of these other ones. Uh, well, you could try it out, but I don't think they sound good in this situation. Now usually I set the clip level to minus 2 decibels, and that's usually what I leave the kick sound at. So that means it will get no louder than negative 2 decibels on here. So what you do next is you hit the spacebar to get your loop playing and crank up the drive until it sounds good.
Now what you hear there is when I turn it up really loud, the distortion is nasty. Maybe you want that in a song. I don't want it in this, so I'm going to lower it until it sounds just loud enough, but it doesn't distort the sub frequencies. So there at 6.5 decibels, it's nice. It gets that first section distorted in a good way so that it has this good, strong, clicky sound. But at the end, the sub frequencies are loud, so it has a nice, punchy sound. So I'll bounce it down to audio to show you again what's going on. So here we are. We have the first sample here. That was before anything we did. And let's see, I'll make it a little bit bigger here so we can see what's going on. And I'll hide this. Ta-da! So here we have the first sample before any of our effects. Here's the second one after compressing. You can see the click sound is loud, but this part's quieter. Now this next part is after the bit crushing where we clipped the track. Now what you see here is it always hits these top edges here, and then for a little bit here it flattens out at the tops, but not much. This way it's loud, it's punchy, and it still is clear. It's not all distorted and nasty. So there you go, that's my kick tutorial. Hopefully this helped you out. If you got something out of it, well, post a comment. I'd like to hear your guys' feedback. I'm going to be uploading another video in the next two weeks, and I want to know what I should upload because I have a song that I've finished that I want to give out for free, and I'm also going to be working on more tutorials. So if you want me to have a tutorial up in the next two weeks, then tell me in the comments. If you want me to have that song up in the next two weeks, tell me in the comments. Of course. There you go. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.